Hello everybody. Welcome to this lecture about a successful intervention, agroecological intervention in rice cultivation, which we call as rice eye crop. It's about intercropping legumes with rice. Briefly about myself. My name is Tawseef Mehran Shah. I come from Kashmir. And in Kashmir, rice is the main food which is consumed more than once a day. So the importance of rice in the region and in other regions of the world, in South Asia, Southeast Asia, and also out, outside of Asia is very important given that rice is the main staple food for more than half the world population. And however, there are certain problems that are associated with rice production, rice cultivation currently in the currently dominant form, which is the flooded rice cultivation. So we went out to improve this uh, rice cultivation system by building upon the existing agroecological methods of rice cultivation. So this lecture is about that and the success story which we were able to create during the course of the experiments. So agriculture is the main consumer of uh, freshwater withdrawals worldwide with 80%, more than 80% of the uh, freshwater withdrawals being uh, consumed in agriculture. And from that, out of that, rice farming is the major consumer with over 50% of the agricultural water consumption accounted for rice cultivation. The other problem that we're encountering currently, which is uh, becoming more and more uh, widespread as well as more attention being uh, given to it, is the problem problems created by agrochemical use in agriculture, which leads to pollution in soils, in water, in food, and also leads to a higher energy consumption due to food production, which would otherwise be avoided. And soil deterioration does not only mean that we are not able to grow crops, it also means that the climate is out of balance and water cycles out of hydrogeological cycles out of balance. So this is a systems problem which needs a systems perspective for to develop system solutions. So if we look at we're talking about rice. So let's have a look at how rice is grown traditionally or the currently dominant form. This is a, you can see uh, in the picture. This is the flooded rice field and people are transplanting rice into it. And as a result, this whole field and hectares of uh, field, rice fields like that are inundated, flooded with rice for the most part of the rice season in the traditional way of growing rice. And ultimately, in certain cases, it leads to such a scenario where there is no water available to irrigate the fields and the rice crop tends to fail. This happened also in Kashmir in 2018 when I was doing my field studies there, that the local uh, irrigation department advised farmers against growing rice, but it was a huge problem because People depend on rice for their livelihoods, for their food, and also so that such a thing meant socioeconomic imbalance in the society. So there needed to be some solution uh, that, that would cater to this water shortages and also declining yields or stagnating yields. And here comes the intervention or the role agroecology can play in such a problem. Agroecology basically is a design of uh, or aims at designing resilient, efficient and sustainable food systems based on the study of ecology of agricultural systems. So it doesn't consider agriculture simply as a production system where you give inputs and you get output. It considers agricultural system farming as a, as a complete system which has uh, relationships and linkages to water system, to the soil health, to the environment, also to the social system. And uh, in this context, agroecology could mean natural nitrogen fixation, natural pest control, weed control through cover crops. And it also uh, aims at um, balancing the socioeconomic system by engaging the main stakeholders who are involved in rice farming, uh, that's the farmers. So uh, here's a brief comparison which we can see, um, in which we can see the difference between the current agribusiness model and what agroecology uh, aspires to 
setup. In the agribusiness model, you have large scale monocrops, monocropping systems, you have huge uh, influence of agrochemicals and yield oriented agriculture. But in agroecology, you have much more on farm uh, biodiversity, you have a role to play. You have, a, you have cover crops and you have animals also grazing holistically on the, on, on the plots. So you have a holistic, you have a systems approach to agricultural production. And that such an approach um, leads to multiple or gives multiple benefits to the society. For example, it, it, uh, it, it, it fosters soil health and biodiversity. It uh, uh, fosters air, better air quality and local access to fresh food produced locally and ultimately which leads to uh, such agricultural practices which uh, which encourage or which lead to better uh, water quality as well as air quality and conservation of natural resources. How would uh, ag an agro agroecological approach to rice cultivation look like? So as we, as we uh, mentioned earlier as I mentioned earlier, rice fields are currently uh, dominantly flooded when they are uh, transplanted and also kept like that for a, couple, a few months. But such this would this is how it would look like uh, under a agroecological system. For example, the system of rice intensification. You have alternate wetting and drying of the rice field, but the crops grow better. That is a, uh, the, the fact that has been demonstrated all around the world. So this water that is that you see here is somehow one would say one would argue it's waste. It, it goes waste. So such a huge quantity of water goes waste simply because of unstated reasons. Um, yeah, such an approach could lead to uh, water conservation and better. Uh, performance of crops but better uh, income for farmers and uh, as we mentioned system of rice intensification as an agroecological strategy so our approach is to introduce more agroecological practices into system of rice intensification because it has some um, certain criticisms from certain quarters who say that uh, for example the system of rice intensification involves or incurs heavy weed infestation or that it, it promotes monocultures or that the labor um, requirements are high. So we set out to answer these criticisms that SRI is capable of being improved upon and make it even better. Um, for example, this is a SRI field ready for transplantation. This is a image of a SRI rice field transplanted according to the SRI principle and being weeded upon. And this is how it looks like. So kind of uh, the criticism that SRI promotes um, monocultures somehow uh, is on point. So, But it is something that can be improved upon. And that's what we will uh, talk about in the next uh, part of the lecture. Um, so this is how um, an S a rice farm looks like. This is a plant square in an SRI field. So these are the four plants which I call a plant square. A square space formed by four plants. So as you can see there are weeds growing around in this uh, uh, area. It's uh, important to mention that uh, weeding, uh, manual weeding is an important part, constituent part of SRI. But this field, this uh, rice plot, is a demonstration plot to show what happens if we don't weed the SRI plot, which needs uh, manual labor as well as time. So we sought out to somehow biologically uh, manage this uh, the problem of weeding. So in this space in between the plants, it could very well be used to grow another crop. And that we argued or we, we hypothesized that it would lead to better crop performance, less weed infestation, and also somehow better he soil health conditions. So let's see if it and how it worked. So um, one of the main um, planks of agroecological intervention is, is fostering higher biodiversity because higher biodiversity increases resilience in every system, in ec human ecosystem, in agricultural ecosystem, in every ecosystem, biodiversity increases resilience against external influences. So 
If we overcome rice monocultures by the introduction of intercropping, that could uh, increase the resilience of rice farming systems because it has been proven in other uh, farming systems in uh, different parts of the world. For example, this photo is this image is from uh, Kashmir where maize uh, and uh, beans are grown together in a plot and it works. This system has been working for um, many generations and it's, it's being practiced even now. And this is what we also tried in rice. We tried to grow rice together with beans. And how did the performance, uh, how did we measure the performance of this system? Let's find out. The underlying mechanism of, uh, uh, or, or the logic behind growing uh, legumes with a specific field crop is the nitrogen fixation uh, in the soil by the legumes, which can be illustrated as uh, uh, done in this picture. The nitrogen from atmosphere is fixed by the legumes into the soil and the crop residue from the legumes also adds to the biological content of the soil while as there is an exchange of nutrients from uh, yeah, from the other crop to the so this, it's a symbiotic relationship where the legumes provide nitrogen to the uh, main main crop so to say and the main crop also provides some nutrients certain root exudates to the uh, to the legumes for their growth so it's a win-win situation for both uh, as well as the soil as well as the agro ecosystem yeah so this uh, picture illustrates further how the exchange looks like nitrogen compounds um, uh, go from the nodes right uh, uh, rhizosphere in the rhizosphere into the um, a leguminous plant and in, in return the leguminous plant provides food and photosynthetic products to the to the bacteria to the uh, in the rhizosphere to grow and this is a practical uh, representation of how these uh, rhizomes look like how these colonies of bacteria look like that fix the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil that ultimately adds to the main crop or, or the soil health so sri is basically um, it's a successful system that has been there now for 40 years from the 1980s. It has demonstrated uh, success in over 60 countries and it is classified as a farming system based on agroecology. And it differs from the traditional uh, rice farming system, which I can illustrate with some sketching here. For example, this is traditional and this is SRI. We have, for example, this is a field of rice. There's water flooded all over. And the plants are grown at, say, 10 to 15 centimeter apart. And at one place, there are more than one plant uh, seedlings that are transplanted at a time but in the case of SRI you have a wider spacing between the plants like 25 to 30 centimeters and you have single seedlings planted at a single hill you say planting hill and the, the space in between is not flooded with water it left it's it's watered and then left to dry but it's not inundated it's not flooded continuously as is done in the traditional setup so in this um, sri setup you have the space which we talked about earlier as well and you have alternating wet and dry conditions that are needed for other crops anyway so you have a system here you have a space here to grow another crop which would otherwise not grow under flooded conditions so sri provides room for more agroecological interventions intercropping cover cropping in the rice field and this would could look like this that you have uh, as illustrated in this figure you have rice crops growing in uh, aligned rows and in the midst in the midst of this uh, square form of the, formed by the rice plants individual rice plants grown at a distance under sri system you can um, sow the beans as can be seen in this figure 
in this photograph from the experiments. Uh, the geometry of nitrogen delivery or nitrogen fixation would look like somehow something like this in uh, in this case uh, the beans sort of uh, supply nitrogen to the, to the soil to four rice plants at a time and this uh, we expect would uh, lead to a better rice crop performance which uh, we can see from uh, yeah from the results that we mentioned now so these parameters um, uh, these parameters uh, were measured in the in the studies first with uh, greenhouse experiments done at the Hamburg University of Technology and then the field experiments done in uh, Kashmir region in South Asia um, yeah this is how our experimental field looked like this is the intercropping of beans at a later stage after the rice plants have grown maybe 10 days we did after 10 days 12 days so there should be uh, there should be uh, this um, the, the, the intercropping of the second crop should be done at an appropriate time depending on the, depending upon the nature of the intercrop that we are sowing it shouldn't uh, hinder the growth of the main crop. That's the important thing. So let's come to the results of the studies. Um, um, first up, let's um, talk about the water demand that was uh, uh, measured or the water consumption that was measured in the greenhouse experiments or the experiments at the Hamburg University of Technology in Germany. Water savings were uh, observed um, up to 40 percent water savings and this also was then uh, observed in the field experiments as we can see as is, it's it's kind of obvious because you have a field uh, inundated with water and then you have dry fields so obviously there is water savings but this was uh, sort, of, sort of quantified at the experiments at the university and up to 40 percent 39 percent water savings was uh, measured um, nitrogen uptake was also measured in the um, experiments in the university and we saw a general trend of higher uh, nitrogen uptake um, under intercropping higher phosphorus uptake under intercropping and almost similar uh, potassium uptake um, under the intercropping management system but nitrogen is the uh, important um, element important nutrient that leads to directly has a direct correlation with the growth of the rice plants and its effect was also seen in other uh, growth parameters which we are discussing later and the chlorophyll content chlorophyll we know is um, necessary for the photosynthetic function of the plants and it, it was also found to be higher in case of intercropping treatment much higher in, in case of intercropping treatment as compared to um, normal SRI and also as compared to the flooded rice cultivation yeah and chlorophyll content is uh, has been uh, widely reported to be uh, directly related to the increase in biomass production and yield in crops while as because it also has to do with the fact that nitrogen is an essential component of chlorophyll hence a higher level is expecting with higher nitrogen uptake this was seen in for example the higher much higher number of tillers in uh, intercropping treatment uh, that was seen in the lab experiments as we could see in the photograph so with these uh, results we mentioned and other uh, parameters that were measured in the lab experiments we had uh, proof we got a proof of, proof of concept so to say that this intervention can be scaled up and taken to the field level for the benefit of the farmers so that's what we did we went to the farm we went to the field and um, implemented this uh, new farming strategy in the rice farming systems uh, this is a brief timeline of how we can do things um, under this new system where you can basically after the first weeding which is done traditionally in the SRI system after the once the first weeding is done in the in the picture you can, we can see that uh, the farmer is doing weeding and parallelly uh, once the weeding is done the other farmer is sowing the 
uh, intercropping uh, seed into the rice field. Um, we, we did the intercropping after 10 days after transplantation, but it can be adjusted depending on the type of intercrop. This is how it looked like, beautiful little bean crop growing in the midst of rice crops. And this is how it looked like at the end. You have rice crop and you have a, a bean crop uh, harvested side by side. You can, the intercrop can, depending on the nature of the intercrop, it can be simply mulched into the soil or it can be harvested like a normal crop. Plant growth characteristics that were measured uh, during the field experiments, the maximum height observed was higher in intercropping treatments. The number of tillers was higher in the intercropping treatments. And these are just uh, uh, some of the uh, results that we're showing here. We have much more results, which we, you can see in the book that, we'll mention at, that we will mention at the end. The panicle length, which is a, a main characteristic that is responsible, that is shown to have direct correlation with the yield. This was also found to be higher in case of intercropping treatment. And the images here of the farmer's kid and the farmer can be uh, are a much better representation of the results. For example, in this image, you have a intercropping treatment and you have normal SRI treatment. It was better performance in case of intercropping. And also here, you have a SRI with intercropping treatment and you have a normal grown flooded rice cultivation. You have much longer uh, uh, spikelets here, much longer manacles in the intercropping treatment as compared to the conventional treatment. And this uh, did translate to better yields and also better income returns for the farmers. Um, yeah, this is a comparison of the other yield parameters. For example, the spikelet number per panicle, the total yield per hectare, and also one of the important uh, results that we observed was that it also le led to higher biomass, higher fodder units that were harvested uh, uh, during the uh, experiments. And uh, the fodder units or the biomass, rice husk, basically rice straw, is an important component that is uh, an important commodity, that I would say, that is uh, of high value in, in, in the area. And it also led to better earnings for the farmers. This is a photographic representation of uh, photographic representation of uh, the rice uh, grain yield from the three different treatments: CFR being conventional flooded rice, SRI being snow fry intensification, and SRIBI being the rice I crop intercropped rice. Um, yes, so yeah, so this is how the rice uh, crop yield looks like at the end, and. Yeah, but one of the um, most, uh, I would say, striking results of the intercropping treatment was its effect on the weed management, because it uh, there was a there was a reduction in weed infestation by up to 70% due to the introduction of intercropping, and this uh, means uh, this is the the photographs uh, are a clear representation of how it looks like. You have weeds growing here and but in case of intercropping you can barely see a properly widespread growing weed plant maybe a little one here maybe a little one here or maybe this is the bean bean crop itself so this may, this means a drastic a drastic decrease in the weed infestation means better plant growth on one hand and avoiding the use of pesticides on the other hand yeah, again, the two comparison photographs to see uh, more clearly the difference in the weed infestation. And yeah, this. Yeah, so we sort of, uh, yeah, like we, like you said, we, we, we started with the SRI management system of rice cropping and took it to the next level by introducing intercropping into it. And these pictures are from the, from the second year of experiments to have weeds growing in the um, SRI uh, crop SRI plot, which were left uh, unweeded. And this is uh, the same uh, kind of uh, treatment, but with intercropping. So we basically uh, improved upon SRI and took it to a next level in terms of agroecological interventions. Yeah, weed control without pesticides, we would say and additionally a second crop as a plus as a bonus
yeah this is the photographs which we already saw so just for the aesthetics so this is how it looks like in the beginning the uh, the bean crop growing parallel to the rice crop and this is at the end with what you harvest so yeah away from monocultures enter intercropping for more eco agroecology more ecology and agricultural systems. So how did it look like? How did it pan out for the farmers um, from, from an economic perspective? Economics of the innovations. Let's have a look at. So um, in the conventional farming system, you have you had a total, uh, this is per hectare basis, uh, these numbers. You have a per hectare input costs of around one lakh rupees, that's 100,000 rupees. And in intercropped SRI treatment, you had a, a net output or earnings of 160,000 rupees. That is 160,000 rupees. That meant uh, an increase in the net earnings of around 60%. And this, in such a context, means the difference between could mean the difference between uh, secure livelihoods and starvation. And this, but an important thing to mention here is that the compost formed, uh, the cost of uh, procuring compost formed the major cost in the SRI intercropping system. So with, with locally produced compost where farmers have their own composting facilities, uh, cooperative facilities, uh, for example, this increase in earnings could be even more. It could be, it could increase by more than 100%. So this is a way to secure livelihoods, a way to healthy and resilient food systems, a way out of starvation for many. So maybe it's an idea worth sharing. Yes, uh, so this was um, my sort of message uh, to all of you regarding what we uh, understood from our experiments, what we understood from the farmer participative experiments done uh, in rice farming systems for yeah, better performance of the rice farming system, more resilience, more diversity in rice farming systems based on agroecology, based on the uh, existing method of system of rice intensification. Uh, yeah, further materials, we, I talked about the book. Uh, it is available uh, as a free download um, uh, titled Agroecological Engineering Interventions for Food Security and Sustainable Rural Development. You can download it from the uh, link I have uh, um, included here. There's also another online interactive lecture of the revival project on the link given there. And um, the SRI Resources Center is a is a sort of um, a main resource, international resource center, a collection of all literature around SRI. You can also visit the website to know more about SRI. And yeah, if you're interested. Further reading material about um, agroecological interventions, the potential of agroecology in furthering food security and food sovereignty um, can be, uh, yeah, further reading can be done from these two books and other books available. But these two books are available for free. That's why I included them. Yeah, we look forward to some comments and discussion in the comments section and uh, keep uh, track of this YouTube channel. There will be further uh, content coming up, interviews with the farmers, further, in, uh, further success stories and uh, help spread the word. Thank you very much.